So, it's Christmas Eve and here I am making this bloody video for you because I had nothing else to do. There's cleaning going on at home, so I ran away. First of all, Merry Christmas. I hope you are, if you see this on Christmas Eve, you should, you should be seeing this sometimes after Christmas. But anyway, happy holidays to all. Hope you're safe. It's been one hell of a year, but more about that when we actually pass to next year. Um, I still haven't got my pedal board, sorry about that. It's a long going, ongoing process to get everything right. I am the uh, first one they make this special board for, so I'm waiting to see what Petteri Hirvan and Kitara Kellari will come up with. Um, I was asked a question about how I approach when I play like when I do the Drink Floyd thing, the Pink Floyd songs, do I go and copy all the sounds and, and do I copy every note? No, I don't. Um, when we first started, I still was in the rack gear and I was doing a lot of presets. But in the long run, I just got really tired of it and I, I actually was not a Pink Floyd fan. And when I was asked to join this tribute band called Drink Floyd, Wish You Were Beer, I was asked uh, by Bryn Jones, I said, you gotta come and play guitar. Uh, and I was like, I was sitting with my, my wife and, and Bryn at Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe have asked if Bryn could get a drink Pink Floyd tribute together. And I was like, no, I can't, we're, we're living on our honeymoon, I'm sorry. And Yassi, my wife said, what are you saying? We're leaving two days after the gig. I was kicking like, no, no, we're not. I can't do it. Because I wasn't really sure I wanted to do it. First of all, I've never been a Pink Floyd fan and I haven't really listened that much to Pink Floyd. I like David Gilmore a lot, but I like his solo stuff more than the Pink Floyd stuff. Or so I thought. In the long run, I'm the guitar player in Drink Floyd. And uh, before we started rehearsing, I got a list of songs from the guys. And uh, I had a lot of work to do. I have never, I had never listened to Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall, or Wish You Were Here. Never listened from the beginning till the end. And to be honest, I still haven't. I only listened to the songs that I had to learn. Um, first, my first realization was that fucking hell, there's a lot of great guitar stuff here, isn't it? Great sounds, great stuff. <clears throat> and uh, I made a list of all the songs, what sound, songs I needed. And I realized that mostly it was the delays for some of the stuff that was important, like uh, another brick in the wall, those dun -da -da -dun -da -da delays. And uh, we did, uh, what else did we do? Run Like Hell also has the same kind of delay, but it's a little bit faster. So there was two kind of this uh, strong repeat uh, presets that I needed. And then I needed a slap back and a little bit longer delay for the leads. The other effects that he, David Gilmore used at that time mainly was uh, a fuzz and uh, a uni vibe. And those things I had, I added chorus for some parts. And then, you know, I had this script strip rack system. It was great to have four presets for each song until I realized that he never had any of that when he played these songs. And I just went down to the, have a simple board now and playing mono instead of stereo and it really worked. What I do is I try to copy the sounds a little bit, but obviously I'm not into high watts and I don't use the same. One thing that I did learn that I was I had to get a compressor. I've never really was been into compressor pedals before. So I had to learn how to use the compressor pedal at the right moments to get these certain sounds. And uh, I copied like uh, the beginning of the solos and then I just went off on my own. Uh, some solos I didn't even, I got the two notes that start with right and then I just played whatever I felt like. And I had earlier on some comments, that's not the way it goes. I said, no, it's not. It's the way I played it. I don't care. If we would be called Pink Floyd tribute, but we're Drink Floyd. And there's a huge difference. Wish you were beer and comfortably drunk. Uh, numb. Uh, comfortably numb, for instance, I obviously do the first part, the first solo in the middle, I do it pretty much 
note to note, not exactly because I couldn't be bothered to figure it out exactly. And then the end solo, it's just what I play. I mean, it's simple chord progression that you can play, have a nice solo on and I've been encouraged to play a long solo there so you have to be able to build it up, start slower and then add gain, whatever. I even use a wah-wah pedal, almost do a little bit like a Hendrixy thing at the end just for a, for a little while, then I go back to playing regular. For me, I've been playing guitar so long that I, I just want to play so that I'm happy and, and I enjoy playing. That means that I'm not going to copy note for note. Uh, so that's my approach to, to doing the Drink Floyd thing. Uh, the song in the beginning and at the end again is a song called GMT from my Melodic Relief album and uh, it's a tribute to Gary Moore and you can clearly hear it, it's a tribute to Gary Moore but then again I don't uh, there's one faster lick that you can say oh that's a Gary Moore lick but it's played in the my feeling of Gary Moore so I don't copy note for note I used to when I was into Blackmore and, and uh, Michael Schenker and, and in the early days I used to copy solos note for note but then I just gave up, took too much time, I spent too much time learning them and then I just figured I could just play and improvise. So a shorter one episode or chapter now because I gotta run home and pack some presents. Um, be good, I'll be back maybe before New Year's, hopefully we'll see. I have some ideas what to do, maybe I even have my finally my pedal board. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the song, and as a bonus, I uh, realized I have one strat I hadn't presented for you, and this is the one. Okay, here we go with yet another of my guitars, which I kind of forgot about this one. I've had it at home, and that's where I played the most, kind of the one that I use at home when I play electric, um, and I've written quite a few songs on this, actually for the last albums too. Um, this is an Italian made, handmade guitar called Paoletti, not Spaghetti, Paoletti. The special thing about this guitar is that uh, the body is made out of chestnut which is uh, supposed to be 120 years old from old wine barrels. Um, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, I don't know, but uh, it's, it's quite lightweight and it's super uh, acoustically vibrant. It, it really has a big tone, just acoustically. And uh, I've used this for a lot of the Drink Floyd gigs and uh, Clockman pickups, all pretty standard stuff. Great guitar, uh, should take it out more. Uh, the neck needs a little bit of work, but I will take this out and gig soon again. Such a great guitar. I forgot that I had it. Shame on me. Okay, here we go. Some more cleaner stuff.
And some little bit more high gainy stuff. Just let me switch the channel on my amp one. <laughs> Thank you. 